It's time for us to try to predict the Western Conference for the 2024-2025 season. We did Eastern Conference yesterday. That was almost impossible. The Western Conference is a better conference. So if I was struggling yesterday, I mean, 30 minutes ago, if I was struggling on Eastern Conference, then I know the West is about to be a bloodbath. I would say some of the things I said in yesterday's video. I don't have any hidden agendas. These are just me trying to predict the 15 spots. We don't know who's going to get traded. We don't know who's going to miss because of injury and so on and so forth. This is not me trying to go 15 for 15, but instead this is for me to have a personal snapshot of my opinion about every single team going into the season. And we'll come back at the end of the year and see, hey, we were right here. We were wrong uh, on the rest. <laughs> one for 15 will be off yeah uh whoo where do we start i think we start at the bottom right i firmly do believe that teams at the bottom we're working with and i'm not gonna click them because I, I, I learned my lesson the utah jazz should be towards the bottom the portland trailblazers should be towards the bottom i think every single other team all 13 other spots are teams trying to win this season that's crazy. That's almost unheard of. So who's going to be worse between Portland and Utah? Let's say Utah is worse because they're younger. And let's say Portland school Henderson looked kind of good in the last couple preseason games. I saw uh, DeAndre Ayton is starting to shoot threes. Oh my God, will he finally be dominating? I don't really know. They traded for Denny Abdi. I just have more trust in them winning regular season games over the Utah Jazz. Cool. Now where? Where, where do we go? Let's go to the top. Oklahoma City Thunder with the one seed last year. I think they're better this year than last year. Whether that be just because uh, I believe J-Dub should be an MFP candidate. Chet Holmgren might be a DPOY candidate. And Shea is going to be an uh, MVP candidate. I think this is pretty good. Even with Isaiah Harden stop missing the first month-ish of the season. After that, here, here are the teams I'm thinking about for the two seed. We have the reigning Western Conference champion, Dallas Mavericks. Of course, they made some trades or made some changes this offseason. We'll see what that looks like regular season win-wise. Denver Nuggets, obviously, they have completely secured their core after extending uh, Aaron Gordon a little while ago. Even though Minnesota traded away Carl Anthony Towns, I am still a believer that they should be able to win a bunch of regular season games. And sneaky, I have the Phoenix Suns. I talked about this on the podcast where uh, Coach Bud basketball is like a real thing. And, and though it may not translate to the offseason or the postseason all the time, regular season wise coach bud is one of the best coaches you could possibly have he changed the entire identity of your team you go from a team that don't shoot threes to shooting almost exclusively threes other than get it to the paint and you saw that in the preseason they go from a team that doesn't rebound well to one of the highest defensive rebound rates in all the basketball bud ball is real so sneakily they're in conversations for me and remember this is this is not an indication of what's a contender slash pretender but we only are talking about regular season wins so with that said i do want to take shots i said it yesterday i do want to take shots you know take some take some chances uh, i can't just look at last year's stands and be like boom all of that's going to be the same so my first shot for the western conference is that bud ball will be real for the regular season now this is a huge risk because Kevin Durant is coming off his most healthy season since, what, like 2019. Devin Booker was really healthy last season. You pray that they have that level of health again this year. I don't really know. Obviously, we don't know anything. But if they are healthy, I do believe the Suns should be able to, with their new additions from the point guard position and the new coach, should be able to win a bunch of regular season games. Is that crazy? I know that the last 10 games of their season is almost impossible, but I'm still going to trust my first shot of the video. Phoenix Suns end up as the two seed. After that, we still have the same teams that we're talking about. Dallas, Denver, Minnesota basically are my next three to try to pick between. And I'm think I'm leaning towards Minnesota because even though Carl Anthony Towns is no longer there, I think their, uh, their identity as a defensive oriented team doesn't go anywhere. Uh, they should still finish as one of the three to five best defensive teams in basketball. I know they were number one, so I'm being kind of lenient there. So that should stay the same. Anthony Edwards should be better, obviously, with, with his progression. We've only seen a little bit of Julius Randle with the team. I'm close to saying that's a regular season juggernaut as well. So let's go with it. Minnesota is my three seed. So now we're fighting between Dallas and Denver for regular season wins. Uh, Dallas versus Denver in the first round of the playoffs would be kind of crazy. I'd be here for it. Which team do I trust to win more regular season games? I don't know, man. It's, it's something a bit, I don't use the word off-putting. Because that feels disingenuous. I made a video about the, the Denver Nuggets a few days back, if you missed that video. I don't has, have as much trust in the Denver Nuggets now that I did last year, the year before that, the year before that, or the year before that. So part of me wants to say, hey, the reign of Western Conference champion is still going to be one of the really good regular season teams. And I guess I'll go Denver at number five. So again, this is all changed. I might change it by the end of the video, but that's what I'm feeling right now. So the next question is, what is the next team to miss the plate play in, but instead is one of the six secure teams. And if I'm being honest with you, there are a lot of different options here. I think uh, the Golden State Warriors are a sneaky option for me. 
I think that the Memphis Grizzlies are an option for me. Um, I'm still trying to figure out where I sit with the New Orleans Pelicans without their center core being something that I'm really interested in, um, especially if they're going to be doing some smaller lineups here or there. How will that translate to the regular season win total? While we think about that, let's take a look at the bottom of the standings. This is basically, even though I love Victor Wimbanyama and y'all know Chris Paul is my favorite of all time, I still don't believe they're going to be good enough to make that jump. If they do, I'm here for it. Give me more Chris Paul postseason minutes, even though he's 67 years old. But something tells me they're probably still a play, uh, a lottery team. So it's like, is it San Antonio here or is it the Clippers? I, like, I genuinely do believe that the Clippers are not going to be that good this season with all the question marks that are going around there. He, even though Terrence Mann says this is the best defensive team he's ever played with. I'm interested to see that. Y'all know Chris Dunn is my boy. I know he helps there. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. coming off a career year and everything. But I can't say I confidently believe in them over any other team here. Is it possible? Of course. Anything is really possible. But I don't really believe in it nearly as much as I believe in these other teams. So I'm going to go Clippers here and then San Antonio there. So that, that means that of this group, one of them is missing it completely. And all of these teams are, are playoff quality rosters, in my personal opinion. I think the easy thing is to say the Houston Rockets would be there because that's what they did last season. They made a late season push and they ended up pushing the Warriors for that 10th spot, but it fell through at the end of it. I would expect them to be better this season, but how much better is the question? So, so I really, okay. So for this last six seed spot, again, I said I want to take some shots, right? But his last six seed shot, uh, I, I'm looking at Memphis and I'm looking at the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I'm looking at Memphis and I'm looking at the Golden State Warriors. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's me being naive and me being a little bit more bullish than the consensus, but I believe in the Golden State Warriors as long as Steph Curry is healthy. And I don't, I'm not wishing no injury on nobody. I, I think they have a better looking team this year than last year. And I firmly do believe that if it wasn't for Draymond Green acting like an ass all season, that they could have been the sixth seed in the regular season. Last year, uh, they were 13 and 14 in the games he didn't play, which if we're doing some math, which... I guess I have to do. So with Draymond, that would mean that they were 33 and 22. Um, and that's a 60% win percentage, would have, which would have literally put them as a six seed. Now, obviously, that's not an exact science. There are a lot of other variables. Clay Thompson is no longer there and so on and so forth. But I believe in Pod taking a jump. I think Moses Moody has looked really good in preseason for what it's worth, that he'll be in the rotation. And I, I believe that Kaminga could be that secondary guy alongside Steph Curry. Here, here I am convincing myself the Golden State Warriors will be a six seed. Now, that leaves Houston, L.A., Memphis, uh, New Orleans, and Sacramento as the final five. Because I was flipping a coin between the Warriors and Memphis, I'll put Memphis here. Memphis is, has the biggest variety, right? Memphis Grizzlies could be a two seed next season. They could be a playing team. I have no way to gauge it. I love Zach Eady as a prospect for them. I think he, he does some of the things they need from the center position. And obviously, John Moran being back with a mission is pretty elite. But they're already dealing with some injuries, some of them smaller than others. But like Vince Williams Jr. being, being gone. His emergence last season, Gigi Jackson being out for a little bit. And then now it just, uh, I just saw that Jaron Jackson Jr. is not ready for the start of the season. That could mean anything. I'm just going to go, I'm going to go there for now. And uh, they they have, out of all these teams, they have the opportunity to make me look the most foolish, but I don't even feel confident in putting them at number seven. So will I look foolish? Who knows? So that leaves us with these last four. One of these teams are going to miss it completely. Wow. One of these teams going to miss it completely. The Sacramento Kings are a team that, you know, went out there and, and I like what they did by just adding more talent. It felt like they had got, come st become stagnant last season and they did start to find a little bit more defensive culture in the second half of the season and hopefully they could carry that over. I'm not completely sure though. Um, the Lakers obviously have the new change in coach, but everything else is pretty much the same. Don Connect is on the roster now as a rookie who should be getting some rotational minutes. The, mm, mm, um, I'm going to go Ah, let's go Lakers 8, New Orleans 9. Oh, boy. New Orleans 9. And then that's a coin flip between Houston and Sacramento. Which team will get in? Jeez. Um, <laughs> like, before the play-in, this didn't matter. Whoever the 9th and 10th seed didn't matter, like, five, six years ago. And now I'm sweating on whether a team is going to make the postseason or not. I'm, I'll give the nod to Sacramento just because they did make the change in the offseason. But I think Houston... With the progression of their players, no question marks about their core anymore because they extended Jalen Green and Alperin Shingoon. I think they should be better. They also have an opportunity like the Memphis Grizzlies to make me look really, really foolish in eight months' time. But this is tough, man. This is really, really tough. And I'm going through it again trying to figure out if there are some changes I want to make. Again, I, I feel really confident about my number one, and I feel really confident about my 14-15. Everything else is a crapshoot. 
Uh, I did take some shots right with the Phoenix Suns and the Golden State Warriors being two teams that I trust. Maybe trust them more than I should. Uh, I guess there's a world where both of them are a playing team, if we be realistic. I saw some people who hit me up yesterday like, yo, I think Phoenix is going to blow it up. And I'm like, hey, that's not out of the realm of possibility. It's unlikely, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. It feels weird that the conference final champion of last year, the Western Conference Finals champion, is a four seed right now. But they did it last year as what? A, 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 were they a four seed last year? They did it as a five seed last year. So progression, <laughs> progression. Denver falling does suck. And that I, I don't have any, I don't have any concrete reason for it. I mean, the only change they made was losing KCP, I guess. And KCP from my I made the video, but I don't think KCP is that integral to what the Denver Nuggets really do. So it's it's I don't know. Maybe it's the back end of me having the the question marks about the younger guys. And I think I do believe that at least one of them was gonna pop. I just don't know to what degree. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um Coach Mike Malone is just not a young guy, young, young player player. So he probably will have Russ playing a bunch, which could have varying degrees of success. Dario Sharch is probably going to get a bunch of PT. I just don't know. But you know what? I'm going to stick to my guns. And not that I feel confident, but this is the way we're running it. We'll see how it is. I'll put the link in the description for you to play along so you can show your friends what you think about the season. You take screenshots and you figure out what you're going to be right and wrong about. Um, one, more, one more screenshot. Boom. There it is. Uh, sorry to piss you off if I put your favorite team too low, but the season starts tonight. So that's the reason to be happy.